All right, today I'm gonna to show you some of my custom menus that I use in the ZBrush iPad thing. Doesn't apply to desktop, but uh, I'm lazy and I wanna save some clicks. So first off, your custom menu is gonna be accessible through your little menu here. And it's gonna be this button. It's basically like the space bar on the desktop version. And under this, you'll have your quick menu. And this quick menu will allow you to change your draw size, such as increase your brush size. You have your focal shift, which is kinda of like the softness uh, or like the fall off of the brush focal shift and then Z intensity, how intense your brush is gonna be. And then if you're painting, how much color you're adding. So to quickly demonstrate that, if I wanted to go to my clay build up brush and I wanted to use a smaller brush, draw size down, let's add some eyebrows. I mean, the eyebrows are basically there already. Let's say I wanted to make it softer and let's just go right there and it's gonna give us a much more different effect and it's barely affecting our brush now um, versus if I set this to like negative, it's gonna be really intense and then somewhere in between like so. Uh, or we have how intense, so if I set this to max, it's gonna go crazy, but if I set this to like five, it's gonna be really subtle. So that's the quick menu. Now I'm gonna go ahead and undo all of that and show you one quick thing. Undo, undo, tap with two fingers to undo all that nonsense, da, 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 da. Cool, so if you use three fingers and push up and down on your iPad is gonna make your brush size bigger. If you go left and right, it's gonna change your focal shift. So I don't honestly use this quick menu all that much. If you wanna to go to your Z add, how intense it is, I just have it right over here with uh, this menu. And I just keep my thumb on like this side if I need a new brush, all that. So that's the basics of the quick menu. But if you notice down here, there's also a set of other menus, and this doesn't come by default. You may not have this yet if you don't know the quick menu stuff, but if you swipe to the left, on the right side, uh, you have more menus. These are custom menus. And I'm gonna show you how to make some of them right now and some of the ones that I use. So, if you go to this button right here, you have the ability to create custom toolbars and custom menus. Under your default toolbar, you have the most popular brushes in ZBrush. I'll be honest, I'm not planning on changing this and I honestly have not found a need to make a second toolbar yet. So, what you can do though is if you wanted to add stuff, you can go ahead and take like a brush and come on. Come on, there we go. Click and drag, drop in. Hey, cool, we have a cloth brush. We can make a cloth thing and we can just rename it if we want to by just tapping on that, cool. Now, I use the quick menus a lot more. The quick menus is when you can swipe to the left, swipe this way, uh, and then you can add different things. So you can see I have all these different custom menus here and we'll cover what I use in a second, but let's go ahead and uh, see what I have here. In fact, I think you can only have five now that I think about it, because it's not letting me add any more. That's okay, we can just use custom menu four as a demo to add stuff. So to add stuff to your custom menu, you can go ahead and find a property. So we'll go into our geometry tab on the left side and we'll find our crease options because my custom menu four is gonna be all of the crease things that I like to do. So let's find crease. So we have our crease tolerance, which is gonna be like the angle in which it'll create a crease for our geometry. So I can just click and drag and put this right there. And now we have something on our custom menu. Now you can add a couple more things to uh, increase uh, with the stuff that you're using. So we can just drop this in and now we can scroll down. I have this create shell button, I'll put that up there. So you can just basically click and drag and add things to your custom menus. Now, if you don't like something, you can go ahead and take an option and then drag it over the trash can and be like, goodbye, don't want that anymore. So you have all this stuff. Cool. So what are the things that I use in my custom menus? And I do a lot of the hard surface stuff that a lot of people do way be better organic things in ZBrush for iPad than I do. Uh, but I like the hard surface things. So let's go to our custom menu. First one right here, we have our polish. And polish is kind of like smoothing. And if you don't know what smoothing in is, if you don't know what smoothing is, if you go to your brush tab, let's make our brush a little bit smaller with our clay buildup. And then we just go ahead and add some brush strokes. Now, if we hold the little finger, we can create a 
smoother effect. Now, if I go ahead and undo that, let's go ahead and change our focal shift so that we are getting something a little bit more intense. We're gonna go right there. So now we have this gross blotchy mess. Now under my custom menu here, I have this thing called polish. And if I go ahead and bring, bring this slider up, we can see that it's kind of polishing the mesh. Now, if you don't like where the custom menu is placed, you have these little menus or these little arrows for the menus to uh, make it go wherever you want. I mean, left, left center or right, not wherever. But so we have our polish. You also have this option called Polish by Features, and all these polish features that I use are gonna be under your tool and deformation menus. So you have Polish, you have Polish by Features, Polish by Crisp Edges, and it's basically doing a lot of the same thing that I'm showing you, and it's doing the same thing in the custom menu, though. It's less steps to get there. Now, the other thing I have under my custom menu one here is gonna be my mirror and mirror and weld. I have some of the most important deformation sliders that I use all the time, like inflate, polish by groups, etc., which helps us get some like cool looking flatness or something. But let's say I wanted to do some asymmetrical sculpting. So if I'm looking straight on of my mesh, and if I go ahead and undo this chaos for a second, we have our dude that we're looking at, and we turn off symmetry by turning off the butterfly on the, uh, the right side over here. And on the uh, right side of our view, we go ahead and add an eyebrow. And then we suddenly realize, oh my God, we're not working in symmetry. Oh no, what do I do? Well, what a lot of people will do is they'll go into their subtool menu, go to geometry, go to modify topology and mirror and weld. So if I go ahead and reposition my dude so we can see what's happening when we do our mirror and weld, it's not doing it when we, we just hit it and it's gone. What's happening? Well, it's because the mirror and well is going from the left of our view to the right of our view. Now to fix this, what you would do is go to your deformation and, and under deformation, you have mirror. So we can say, hey, mirror it to the opposite side. Whatever we did on the right side of our view, do it to the left side. Then you go back to geometry and hit mirror and well, now we have our thing fixed, which is exactly what I want. But the problem is that that's a lot of clicks. So what I do is if I am going to uh, need that kind of workflow where I do do my thing, let's just do, 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 sculpt the thing, I will then go to mirror and mirror and weld because I have that in my custom menus. So that's uh, the first custom menu because these are the ones I use the most. I also have my dynamic subdivision tools under my custom menu. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna click on my transpose and I'm gonna set this to a plane by selecting the little cog wheel of our gizmo and then just turn the dude into a, a piece of paper. Uh, that would really suck. <laughs> um, so we have our plane here and if we look at our wireframe, we can see that we have this uh, plane shape. Now if we wanted to do something even lower poly, what we could do is go to our subtool menu, go all the way down to initialize and set our initialize to a grid. But before we do that, we'll set the X resolution Y and the Z to one. Scroll back up to grid and turn that on. So now we have a single polygon. Now I'm gonna go ahead and make a quick hexagon. And the way I'm gonna do that is first, I'm gonna go ahead and control alt and make a mask around the bottom points of my Q or my, my plane here. I'm gonna hold the plus minus and tap the little pin. So that's gonna set the gizmo exactly on that edge. I'm going to clear my mask by holding my control button and dragging a mask outside without selecting my points, then I'm going to hit the home button and that's gonna put that plane at the direct world origin of ZBrush. Now from here, I'm gonna hold Alt and uh, Control and make a mask around the top points and uh, squash this on the X, maybe bring it down just a little bit like so. So we have half of that and then clear my mask. Now from here, I'm going to go to my mirror and mirror and weld. It's gonna mirror from top to bottom. So first I wanna make sure that my gizmo is exactly where I need it to be. So let's go ahead and select our bottom point again, center that up and clear my mask, home, make sure it's just at the home spot. 
back to our quick menu. Now under our mirror and weld, we have the X, Y, and Z property on the right. From here, we can set this to Y and turn off the X. We just wanted to mirror, mirror and weld on the, on the Y axis, and then we can mirror and weld. Don't worry about the floor, that's okay. Cool, now we have a hexagon. Great, awesome, why did you show us this Jags? Well, one, hexagons are great for a lot of the hard surface shapes, but also you have your dynamic subdivision tools, which are super useful for hard surface and ZBrush for iPad. So turn on dynamic subdivision. Oh my God, what's happening? Well, with this, uh, when you use dynamic subdivision, it is going to subdivide your geometry and we're getting this funky shape, but I don't want that. So the reason why my custom menu two is dynamic subdivision is because if I turn off all subdivision, it's turning it on, but under dynamic subdivision, you have this thing called thickness. And this is basically like creating an extrusion for our mesh. So if we go ahead and really drag that out, we have now like a like a hexagon coin sort of thing. Uh, that's what we could look at it. Sure, awesome. Now, the reason why this is super useful for hard surface stuff is because we have uh, our thick object without having a ton of geometry. So fortunately, with the custom menu of our uh, dynamic subdivision, I have the things that I use most. We have our post subdivision here. You can dive into your uh, sub tool palette and your tool palette, go to geometry and just find things that you really like about uh, dynamic subdivision or just any menu in ZBrush and add it to that custom menu. But the reason why I keep my custom menu to just these properties is because now I can just apply this mesh so now I can just say, hey, look, now we have this hexagon shape from here. If I wanted to make this look a little bit more realistic, beveling is obviously the thing that you can do to help make things feel more real. To do that, it's hard in the current version of ZBrush for iPad because there is no Z modeler. But if we go to our custom menu three, I have all a lot of the tools that I use under my polygroups. And polygroups, one of my favorite things is group by normals. Now it's already here under my custom menu three. If I go to group by normals, we can see here that, that every single face transitional edge is getting its own polygroup automatically. And then from here, what I can do is show you my last custom menu that I use for a lot of the hard surface stuff is the creasing menu that I've created. So under our creasing menu, and we kind of went over this earlier, making some, adding some stuff here, we can click on crease and it's going to crease and create sharpness around uh, any angle in our mesh. So we have our tolerance right here. If I set this up and I uncrease all and then crease, it's not gonna crease because our tolerance is too high. You could either crease on an angle, but I'm lazy and because I have custom menu three here, I can do group by normals and then crease polygroups. Now this is useful because for the hard surface stuff and creating those bevels, the way my brain is thinking is, I wanna bevel my polygroup. So under the custom menu four, under your crease menus, under geometry, there is a bevel tool, which you can tr just either trust me or we can get there in a second. Bevel right here under crease. But I keep it under my custom menu four because now what I can do is just hit bevel and oh, it's a little too much. I can just really control that and have this like really, uh, fine bevel around my little shape here. And now if I turn off my polyframe, that's definitely gonna look a little bit more realistic than just uh, having a super hard edge because nothing is a hard edge. Uh, so all that is to say, this is the main custom menus that I use for a lot of the hard surface stuff that I do, especially for the little sketches I'm doing on the iPad and the desktop. Uh, so from there, after that custom menu is done, let's say I wanna do something even fancier. I also have my array mesh tools that I've added where we can go to uh, turn on our array mesh, transpose, lock position, let's repeat to, I don't know, let's make uh, 15 of them. Turn on rotate and then the Y amount set this to 360, cool. And then if we go to our gizmo, we have this chaos happening. Now we have a giant cloned array of like hexagon coins if we wanted to, or we could just go ahead and with this new coin thing that we have, we could very well go to our, turn off our gizmo, turn on our Dynamesh, really bring this up for the hard surface stuff, and then uh, Dynamesh this. It's gonna probably get way too big, but let's see. Let's see how big it gets. 100, 
1.3 million polygons. Okay, but if we look at our polyframe, and it's really dense right now, we can go ahead and turn off our, oh, we don't even have dynamic subdivision on. It's just unhappy. That's okay. We're gonna go ahead and turn off live Boolean and turn off our Dynamesh. And if we go to our wireframe and turn on our trim dynamic, we could theoretically sculpt some like dents and stuff in this. So all that is to say, I have a lot of custom menus in the ZBrush for iPad. I have been using them for the hard surface things and I wanted to share that. So if you learned something, let me know in the comment section down below. Questions, comments, concerns, whatever else, comment section is down there for that as well. And I will leave you with the final tip and that is eat one gram of protein per pound of body weight and you'll make sure you get it. Goodbye, my friends. Bye.